Welcome back to Channel Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from the Modern King. So, Midtown creator. I, I just came across his channel today. He, he seems like he makes great videos. This one's on uh, women destroying marriages and then regretting it. So, please like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get to that. Ciao. It's ciao time. I think that I would definitely be considered um, to have some emotional problems. <laughs> it was my choice for all of uh, the divorce to happen. So, it feels like I should be happy about it. But yeah, you made the decision. You should be happy by it. My soon to be ex husband doesn't want me to have custody of the kids. I don't, I'm like in shock. The second I read it, I started breaking out crying. <laughs> in today's video, we shall take a look at a woman who divorced her husband for Chad, only to instantly regret it. As you join me on today's episode, I encourage you to watch till the end as we dude. I don't know if this is an AI voice. If it is, that's pretty cool. But if it isn't, dude, brother, you, your voice is fucking awesome. We'll unpack this woman's story, starting with her divorce. Let's jump in. I know there's been plenty of people who have been through divorce, but I feel like my way of being able to give back is always trying to give some kind of advice for somebody going through stuff and after being with somebody for 26 or 27 years i can't it's like my brain is not even on day two that's crazy 26 25 years with someone that's most half of most people's lives or most of people's lives nowadays of being divorced and I don't feel like I can make normal decisions. Um, strength is super important and I have the best group of girlfriends and family and it was my choice for all of uh, the divorce to happen. Yeah, so we know. It feels like I should be happy about it. You should. And I am because I think it's peaceful and happiness is what you instill in yourself and share with others and you shouldn't have to be the one that's always happy for the other person but um, one of my girlfriends said yesterday about how strong I was and I basically was emotionless and then today I'm full of emotion so you're going to experience a lot of different things when you go through this and even if it's your choice it's okay to be upset it's okay to wonder because i feel like after spending so much time with somebody and creating such a life if i didn't have some kind of emotion i think that i would definitely be considered um to have some emotional problems <laughs> of course for you to feel this way but you'd be the one to initiate all of the divorce and stuff that's the bs that people call if you th like you should have forethought how your feelings would be in all this and all of the scenarios in the future before you initiate something so devastating between two people uh, and after going through a lot of different therapy and talking through this with a the therapist and coming up with a plan of how to cope some days you just you just let it out and i think today is my day to just let it out so if you're going through it, keep on going. Um, you're going to have up. You're going to have down. You're going to have definitely super high days and super low days. You're going to have days where you know you made the right decision. And you're going to have days where... This is nothing different from any other day, lady. This is a normal day in men's lives. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. Fucking just deal with it. Move fucking on. You feel like don't know what decision to even make. It was hard for me to even put clothes on this morning, which is very odd. Um, I called my mom and just told her, Mama, I'm having a hard time being able just to put normal thoughts together. Imagine feeling this shitty and this devastated that you did to yourself. <laughs> you, you did this to yourself. <laughs> um, and it's not that I... I'm not sad over what my decision was. I'm just sad because I feel like it was just a tough decision to make, period. 
and I was did it, it really? because I had to place myself as priority, and I'm proud of doing that. Um, so again, just keep on going. You're gonna have a lot of different emotions. It really shows how greedy these modern women are. I gotta put myself as priority. And it's okay. I find it disconcerting when women assert that their decision to divorce their husbands stemmed from prioritizing their own happiness. Damn. Yo, shout out to, to Modern King for putting it in a much better uh, sentence and, and, and a much better voice than I said it right before right after. <laughs> Such assertions often overlook a deeper apprehension, potentially driven by an unfounded fear of missing out on unexplored opportunities. This self-centric perspective at times leads them to neglect the essential needs of the entire family unit, even forsaking their responsibilities towards their own children. I mm, divorced and my soon-to-be ex-husband doesn't want me to have custody of the kids. I don't, I'm like in shock. The second I read it, I started breaking down crying. Like, I literally just got the papers five minutes ago. He, um, this is his proposed parenting plan that I have visitation, supervised visitation uh, of my own kids once a month on Saturday and Sunday from nine to three. It's funny how outrageous your 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 feeling and you know, and you know so like distraught by this how do you think the men feel when they get the same news from their wives that they're not going to see their kids anymore and i'm like flabbergasted because i was the primary caretaker primary parent of our kids for the past five years okay the past five years i have been the primary parent and now he doesn't want me to have custody at all or i don't even know if like this visitation count as custody i literally have no it idea count as um when i filed for a divorce i wanted to do 50 50 parenting plan and since i have relocated to florida i'm staying with a friend oh so you divorce and moved where your kids from where your kids are going to uproot your kids' lives so he decided, you know what? They should probably stay here because their school's here. Their friends are here. My family's here. Why should they go move and back and forth with you in Florida and have a horrible life traveling back and forth between two states? Um, that I, oh my God, I'm just so annoyed. I did 50-50, right? A month on, month off. Because, so there's not much trans over. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A month on, a month off? That's weird. I'm so annoyed, actually. Now I'm just realizing that the reason why he was able to file is because I gave him my address. I, I let him know where I was living. And that's why he was able to file. And that's why he was a talking to me. I'll show you the text messages right now. I'm so Here's the text message with me and him. Um... This is why we don't want to tell the ladies these things, guys. Let the ladies fuck up and do their fuckery so our boys can get custody of the kids. Because obviously this lady is not a good parent if she divorced and just moved immediately without any type of, you know, paperwork or everything settling down. That, that, that is not what how courts view that shit. Monday, he texts me, are you staying with Rachel, my friend? And he knows where Rachel is. I said, yes. And I referred to a question. I referred to a f question. You know when Monday was? The 21st. And he filed on the 22nd. I'm so, I'm actually so pissed at myself. All I wanted was to have a conversation to see where his head was at, what he was doing. He said that, oh, I don't think the kids are ready to see you. And this is why I didn't want him knowing. My Bitch. You initiated the divorce, and then you left immediately to another state. And yet, you want to call this gentleman and talk to this gentleman and, and, and settle things after you already left? Like, courts view this as you being a horrible parent. I view this as you being a horrible parent. My location. I literally, 
like, did not explicitly tell him my location. And then the second I gave him my location, he stopped responding to me at all and went ahead and filed this. Yeah, God because that's what he needed was to make sure that you were in another state so he can file. He knew what he was doing. Full parenting plan so that I don't have my kids anymore. Like, what the f He literally, right before I left, was getting a job where he was working Monday through Friday. Previously, he had a more flexible schedule. He was going to work Monday through Friday so I can watch the kids Monday through Friday while he watches them on the weekends, which I'm pretty sure that's 70-30, right, in percentages. Like, what the actual f Should her former spouse contemplate pursuing complete custody yes it signifies a perceived inadequacy in her mothering capabilities this assumption may indicate that the husband possesses substantial incriminating information that's where i was getting at for all this and for him to file and for courts to somewhat agree or, or uh, entertaining it there must really sh some damning proof that she was a horrible mother given the societal presumption favoring maternal custody evidence of this predisposition can be gleaned from a visual account wherein she relocated out of state leaving her children behind yep. ostensibly for personal enjoyment subsequently this divorced individual may encounter a sobering revelation regarding the harsh realities of the dating sphere presenting a stark and unanticipated realization. Before we continue, I would encourage you to share your thoughts in the comment section below, since I love seeing your thoughts. I will also pin the best comment that I think everyone should read. So I just got ghosted by the first guy I went on a date with after my divorce. We went out a couple of days ago. I downloaded Bumble three days ago because I was just did you say a couple days after her divorce? It's like, okay, I'm going to like dip my toe back in the water and whatever. So I matched with this guy. He super swapped me. And then we started talking. He asked me to go out the next day. So we did. And we went out to eat for like lunch. We went and played mini golf. We went out to eat dinner. We went to his house. Like God damn, this guy's doing way too much on a first date with a single mother. Jesus Christ. Like watched a movie. I thought it went really well. Like he even said, I would usually never ask a girl out from like an app so quickly, but I felt really- Girls fall for that line all the goddamn time. Really intrigued by you or whatever. Like he, and I even told him like, cause we spent a lot of time together. I was like, if you need me to like leave or you know, whatever, then that's fine. And he was like, no, nah, I'm a super straight up person. Like I'll just tell you if I'm not feeling it or whatever. So I think we have a nice time. I leave and then you know we talk a little bit um the next day like message back and forth and then today i did not hear from him at all and i see that he has unmatched me on bumble like deleted me off snapchat and blocked me on instagram and i'm just like our last message like he asked me what i was doing and like i told him what i was doing and then he opened that and it was like and it's really upsetting, like, not because I think this guy was going to be, like, the love of my life or because I really liked him so much. No, this is going to be your future of most men. But it's more upsetting, like, the fact that this was my first, like, that was my first date since, you know, my divorce. And it's like, okay, it's going to be like that then. <laughs> like, I'm yep. deleting this app. But um, also because, like, whenever you have been, sorry, I don't mean to cry, but... Whatever you have been like hurt and deceived and like been through intimate partner betrayal and you already doubt your intuition and like you don't trust yourself and like I've been really really good in my healing journey so far. God damn healing journeys. Far like um yeah I felt like I did trust myself and I felt like I've been doing a really good job and then something like this happens and it's just kind of like maybe I overestimated. You know, like Maybe. myself. A lot of Maybe. us who have been with like narcissistic people, men with like corn or SEX addictions, they most always have an avoidant attachment style. How are these women finding every single narcissist, every single porn addicted, sex addicted person? Like these diseases and like conditions are actually quite rare. 
<laughs> right? But every single woman that's ever made a goddamn TikTok has dated not just one, but multiple of these men. Like, multiple. Isn't that crazy, guys? So crazy. Uh, and a lot of times to adapt, we either already had or we develop a more anxious attachment style. And I've really been trying to work on that, too. And, like, I felt so comfortable in where I've been. But it's just, like, by myself. But now that it's, like, trying to factor other people into my life, it's just kind of like I don't know how to do this part. I really don't. Definitely opening up old <laughs> abandonment wounds and rejection wounds and really highlighting, like, areas that I feel like I personally need to work on before I would be comfortable putting myself. At least she's saying that she's, there's some areas that she needs to work on. So a little bit of accountability, a little bit. Back in that position. So, I mean, I guess if anything, this was just a learning experience. I do wish, of course, like I knew why he did that. I, I did message him on Snapchat, which I don't know if he'll even get it or open it because he did unadd me. But I was like, if you didn't like me, you could have just told me. And it was funny because he like prided. No, we can't tell you. Because if we told you why we didn't like you and the reason why, you would be devastated way more devastated than you are not knowing himself on being so mature and he is a year younger than me but he has two kids and like a good job and like is a homeowner and like i don't know i just was not getting that vibe from him on numerous occasions when a woman engages in a mutual match with a gentleman on a dating application it is often indicative that the gentleman may possess characteristics akin to a person of high social desirability. This is true. This gentleman, colloquially referred to as a Chad, <laughs> typically maintains... A I really love this voice and like how he wrote his script. If this is an AI thing, this is wonderful. I'm going to be featuring this channel on for quite a bit because I love the, the King's voice. An array of romantic prospects due to his elevated status. Damn right. Consequently, faced with a plethora of options, the aforementioned individual, herein referred to as Chad, may opt to discontinue communication abruptly, a phenomenon commonly known as ghosting. If you enjoyed this video, I suggest you watch my recent video where a single mother destroys her marriage at 40 and instantly regrets it. That video will appear at the end of this video and will also be. Woo! That was some awesome chow. Shout outs to the modern king. Give this man some support. Give him some more subs. Get him some more views. This man deserves it. I love his content. I love his uh, AI voice. I love his AI um, generated picture. I don't know if it's his AI voice, tell the truth. If it's your voice, king, you let me know because that's a badass voice. Please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.